Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have come to the conclusion of our forum with our traditional black tie gala dinner. And I have a few people who wanted to share some last minute thoughts with us based on the activities that they've participated in. And I am particularly honored to recognize that a person who was with us from the very beginning through to the very end is His Excellency President Ilir Meta of the Republic of Albania. Mr. President, please. Thank you very much, dear friends. Once again, my gratitude goes to Nizami Ganjavi International Center in making, in hosting this uh, great uh, forum and uh, which has made available insight on the current global challenges. We all agree that the world needs urgently peace and security, but this requires an accountable and wise leadership. The common thread of the Baku Global Forum, as it was firmly and clearly indicated at the opening session and during all the discussions in the panels, is security, which must continue to be on the top agenda for us all. War in Ukraine has triggered the most dangerous and unstable situation since the Second World War, and this has heavily impacted security on a global scale. I think that working on security issues, including health, food, or energy security, including also human security, as it was said uh, this uh, morning, should be our focus for the future and on how we can move forward. What pandemics taught us is that we need to build more resilient health systems in our countries and invest more in public health system, which should protect in particular the vulnerable communities in our societies. COVID-19 proved to us all that health issue is closely related to peace, security and economy. And it's not simply a national issue, but an international one. That's why we underline the need for a better global coordination and cooperation that should contribute in strengthening World Health Organization as the leading and directing authority on global health. Food security should remain another top priority on our international agenda. According to the World Food Program, which was warning that 2023 is very well going to be a food availability problem. Unfortunately, the aggression of Russia against Ukraine has brought an increase in food prices everywhere, especially if we keep in mind that Ukraine alone grows enough food for 400 million people. The increase in food prices brings a real threat in the increase of poverty and polarization, which can bring famine, especially in some areas of the world, like Africa, and which can escalate to a real humanitarian political crisis and mass migration in the world. We are running out of time. That's why the governments and international organizations should work on a greater international cooperation aiming at bringing markets to stability. Energy security is another important and urgent issue of our global agenda. The aggression of Ukraine from Russia has brought a huge tension and is teaching us the lesson we knew but didn't want to learn, that we should not become dependent on one source of energy and from only a few countries of the world. We should all work on finding not only quick solutions, but diversifying our energy sources, especially on solar and wind energy, ensuring domestic production, especially on green energy, and securing both distribution and access to our people. And I want to praise very much the role of Azerbaijan for uh, increasing uh, energy security in Europe and in our uh, region, in particular in uh, Balkans. Dear colleagues, participants, and friends, 
The war in Ukraine has made the world more unstable and insecure, while COVID-19 pandemics raised many concerning issues on health safety. The leading international institutions should be more proactive and efficient. It is high time also that the European Union adopts a new approach. Its enlargement should be considered as a powerful geostrategic instrument also. I'd like to praise tonight the courageous decision taken by the European Commission to grant to Ukraine the candidate status. The people of Ukraine fully deserve the European future because they are fighting not only for their freedom, but they are defending European values too because they believe in democracy. Despite the fact that some of our colleagues raised their concerns about democracy, calling it downturn of democracy, backsliding of democracy, erosion of trust in democratic institutions. We all agree that even though democracy is not perfect, it still remains the most inspiring and attractive system for billions of people in the world. And it is our duty to make democracy more accountable, vibrant and representative to restore the trust of the people. It was very impressive what Dr. Tedros was telling us on his childhood and his country, Ethiopia, where he grew up amongst the bullets and violence. Fortunately, he survived, enjoyed democracy and jumped in his national and international career. But today, unfortunately, his country backslided in dictatorship and violence. The lesson learned is that people who sleep in democracy wake up in dictatorship. Hard times test the true leadership and the Baku Global Forum offered this message. Let us join our efforts on national, regional and international level by demonstrating goodwill, dialogue and mutual understanding to make the world a better and safer place for all. Thank you very much for your incredible patience. Thank you, Mr. President, for these kind and thoughtful words that uh, uh, should really uh, keep us going uh, until we meet again and hopefully find much improved situation in the world. I would like to salute a lot of people, but I'll just mention one, an old friend whom I've known for many, many years. I've been very honored to work with him before he became president and after he became president, President Festus Mohai of Botswana, who is still with us from the beginning to the end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And now, just to prove that I uh, didn't hide her somewhere when I appeared on the panel where people were expecting the lovely Kerry Kennedy to show up. And instead, there I was to discuss and moderate a panel on your behalf. So Kerry, would you have some parting thoughts to give to the participants? That would be an appropriate time. Please do join me on the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've talked the last few days about uh, security, and, and now it's a beautiful speech, Mr. President, thank you. But we need security, but there is no security without human rights. Human rights is at the center of security and democracy. We've talked about the pandemic, global warming, terrorism, Russian war crimes in Ukraine, the prospect of nuclear war, refugees, trafficking, economic upheaval, the rise of populism. This sea of troubles will be decided in the context of autocracy or democracy. If it's decided in the context of autocracy, we will lose. That's the end, it's a disaster. If it's decided in the context of democracy, we have a fighting chance. 
I'm, you know, we're here with the Nizami Gunjabi International Center, this beautiful poet. And so I'm going to end with these lines from my favorite poem. It's called Let America Be America Again, and it's by Langston Hughes. But it's not just about my country. It's really about democracy itself, democracy and human rights. This is how it goes. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet and yet must be, the land where everyone is free, the land that's mine, the poor man's Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. We, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, and the endless plain, all, all the stretch of these great green states, and make America America again. That's why we're here. Happy to join you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kerry, for these uh, moving words from the poem by Langton Hughes, uh, one of the great poets uh, uh, of the modern era. Uh, I'd now like to turn to a man who tends to be very quiet. Uh, he is a man of enormous knowledge and great wisdom. And uh, I would like him to share a few words as we come to the end of our program. His Royal Highness Prince Turki Al Faisal of Saudi Arabia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, I was instructed by Dr. Sirajuddin to be brief. And since brevity is the soul of wit, I shall be brief. A few observations about our deliberations. One, I applaud Ehud Barak. Ehud, where are you? He's not here for saying yesterday that a two-state solution for Israel's continuing colonization of Palestine is in the interest of Israel. Alas, I wish he had said that when he was Prime Minister of Israel. Two, reforming the United Nations. This is an imperative. It is not a choice. Those who broke the mold of what the UN Charter was supposed to end, war in big letters, are the ones who set the rules for our conduct. The invasion of Ukraine is a violation of those rules and should not be accepted. But equally, the invasion of Iraq in 2003 20 years ago was an equal violation of those rules and those who called for retribution against Russia should equally call for retribution against the United States. Both inv invasions were flagrantly based and justified on false information. Three, as our young participants asserted their rightful place among us, we should not only listen to them, but we should do what they ask for. For those who justifiably weep and mourn for the people of Ukraine and seek restitution for them, should also weep and seek restitution for other peoples who have suffered equal pain. And I include not only Palestinians, 
and Georgians and Rohingyans and Kashmiris and Syrians, but anybody in the future who falls under that terrible bane of being invaded by another power. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. Indeed, the very word human rights and human security means that it is something that we look to for all humans, wherever they are. And uh, if the news is focused right now on the terrible situations in Ukraine, it is also an important reminder that those who are not necessarily on the front pages right now who are suffering also deserve our attention and support. Uh, I now have sort of uh, a kind of a special program. Some people may be wondering what we have here, but uh, that is very appropriately, and I will call on uh, Her Excellency Hedva Ser, who is a goodwill ambassador of UNESCO, and who is the sculptor of the Tree of Freedom, the Tree of Liberty. And uh, Madam Goodwill Ambassador, please come forward. Distinguished guests, to start, I warmly thank the co-chairs of NGEC, President Vara Vaik Freberger and Dr. Ismail Seragaldin, for giving me the honor to address the forum this evening. My deep thanks are likewise extended to Roshvan, Ways Roshvan, and our Secretary General and all his committed team. In the context of the current global health pandemic and climate changes crisis, the war inflicted upon Ukraine, not to omit growing violence against minorities and vulnerable groups. The multiple challenges that the world faces must be urgently addressed. The concept of living together in peace has become more crucial than ever before. As a response to these challenges and to this evening's question, how can we move forward? UNESCO has launched the Road to Peace, and sharing in a dialogue and an action plan for tolerance and intercultural understanding. This will help to promote a participatory approach to finding innovative solutions and new commitment in advanced concrete initiative for peace dialogue. The Road to Peace aims to underline the contribution of intercultural dialogue to education for sustainable development and all educational levels and is a cornerstone for tolerance and intercultural understanding. The UNESCO initiative is aimed at the younger generations and to women who play such a vital role in the dialogue for peace and in the sharing of common values, particularly at times of conflict resolutions. The intercultural dialogue as promoted by UNESCO also plays an important role in establishing the basic understanding and mutual respect needed to combat widespread racism and discrimination. UNESCO's roadmap against racism and discrimination will lead to this second annual global forum to be held in Mexico in the coming November. And I know His Highness that is going to be to be in one year in Saudi Arabia, the one. The Road to Peace is inspiring by the Tree of Peace, 
a sculpture that I designed and which has been erected in 16 symbol places of the world. The sculpture symbolizes intercultural and interfaith understanding between nations and people, thus promoting a universal path to dialogue and tolerance. The Road to Peace will, I believe, go some way to addressing the challenges facing the global world under currently under such tremendous stress. I'm proud and privileged to be able to represent UNESCO in assisting this with this initiative. Supported by 77 countries, member states, at last executive board. I'm also happy to have shared this project with you all in this evening and thank you in advance for disseminating this timely UNESCO initiative. Thank you. Now I'll, I'm going to have the honor to be the first. Yes, His Excellency President Iller Meta. I understand we may have done it just in time because you're on your way to the airport. <laughs> Why Katrina is so special? You know, yeah. we especially we've been thinking that uh, pre piece of tree will be the best for for people of Ukraine, and that's the best thing that you know what we can. And Miss Katrina is the dearest person to represent Ukraine. Yes, thank you. Now, uh, we should not forget, and somebody who has not forgotten us, a dear friend who is halfway around the world, but who wishes us well, and uh, who has been a very strong supporter of the NGIC. I'm talking about Dr. Chao Chak Win, who's the co-chair of a global circle of NGIC friends, and uh, the president of Australia-China Friendship as well, and Exchange Association, and the founder and chairman of the King Gold uh, Group, and chair of the Asia-Pacific WA Club, the Madrid uh, Group. 
Now, Dr. Shao, as I said, is halfway around the world in China right now, but he sent us a message, a short message, which we will play now. Shalakurting 世界自治面临的挑战，这一主题深入探讨了全球安全体系、全球治理体系、气候变化、多边主义和科技创新等议题，对于如何提高人类应对流行病的能力。也提出了建设性的意见和建议，这是一次高水平的成果丰硕的论坛，与会嘉宾贡献的智慧，对于世界未来的发展具有重要的参考作用。希望我们能够团结在一起。推动世界继续往折和平前体会员和工作团队表示诚挚的感谢正是有了大家的支持第九届国际包括论坛才能取得这样的成功谢谢大家祝大家度过一个愉快的晚上Thank you, Dr. Chow, and uh, thank you for remembering to send us uh, this uh, message uh, all the way from China. Uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, before I abandon this uh, uh, podium uh, for the last time, I would like to, to join me in uh, expressing a deep vote of thanks to not only everybody who is here, who has participated in this, and uh, the people, the, the board and the friends and the members of the NGIC who have made this event possible. But even more, I would like to express our thanks to our secretariat and our staff. And if I may say, <laughs> and if I may say, also a very special salute to our volunteers which you have seen going around everywhere. They too are members of that younger generation who graced our last panel. Friends, this has been a very exceptional event. Uh, for we are meeting at a very special time in the history of the world where imbalances have returned, uncertainties have grown, and it is, in the words of the perhaps most famous poet, if I may say, that there is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood leads on to fortune omitted all the voyage of their lives is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat, and we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. That's of course from William Shakespeare, not me, not me, but it is an appropriate description of our times, 
And I will simply say that by your presence here, you have asserted that we will not lose our ventures, that we will bend the arc of history to our purpose to promote human rights, human security, peace, tolerance, democracy, and all the values that we think of most. And therefore, to close the forum, I can think of nobody else to turn to except our glorious leader, President Bayra Vike Freiberga, who joins wisdom and courage, <laughs> grace and elegance, and we look forward to your parting words, Madam President. Good evening, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a wonderful three days together, and it's wonderful to see how we can come together from many different parts of the world and yet feel as one united family. We have been expressing a variety of views about all that ails our world and our planet. This year particularly, a lot of pain has been expressed. The pain of past wrongs, of present injustices, the pain of unsolved conflicts and problems. And may I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that every pain that we heard about has been taken note of. Many times those who are the victims of injustice and suffering suffer from the fact that they feel unheard, unseen, and declared as if they were inexistent. Here in this forum, every pain touches the hearts of those who are here. Many of us have one kind of pain or another that our country and that our region carries in its inheritance together with all the positive things that our fate has bestowed us or deprived us of, as the case may be. But I would like to emphasize that the current situation and the invasion of Ukraine does deserve, Your Highness, a special attention on our part, and that the sharing the pain of the Ukrainians does not take away our feelings of compassion and sympathy for any other pain anywhere in the world. But what is special about this particular aggression is that it is being committed by a major power in the world and one that has aspirations to being greater still, by a power that has an enormous nuclear arsenal as well as a massive conventional war capacity. A member of the five veto power holding countries of the United Nations, a country that has threatened not just the existence of the neighboring country of Ukraine with which it has signed treaties, agreements, memoranda, transferred uh, the feelings of the Soviet times archaically and uh, inappropriately to the present day, declared the Ukrainian people unworthy of existence, unworthy of life, unworthy of sovereignty and territorial integrity, if that goes without saying, and threatening with its nuclear arsenal. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this threat of using the massive power 
the nuclear power of a large country against another simply for the fact of it having chosen its own path and its own way threatens everybody in the world just like the wheat that is being prevented from being exported from Ukraine and that is being stolen from the silos of Ukraine is creating a ripple effect of hunger across the world which has not yet finished the threats of such a nature the threats of annihilation of Armageddon are not to be tolerated and they do require of us a special reaction and a special village vigilance and therefore I repeat again we are not slighting anybody's pain or the injustice they have suffered but yes the case of Ukraine is exceptional and it does deserve our special attention not just our compassion but our aid and our intervention but coming back to our meeting here may I thank you all for sharing with us your experience your wisdom your knowledge your passion your commitment and the variety of views that you hold I think we can be proud in this Nizami Ginjami Baku forum that we've had this is the ninth that we have observed the rules of civil society we can express differing news and differing attitudes propose differing sometimes contradictory solutions but we do so in a civilized and mutually respectful manner ladies and gentlemen I like to think that we are a microcosm here of civility of goodwill and of humanity uh, that we can all be happy and proud to belong you thank you all for coming here to be with us thank you to our host country Azerbaijan to President Ilham Aliyev for his continued support to our wonderful staff at the Secretariat to our Secretary General Rafshan Muradov the volunteers the hotel the Sheraton Hotel which supports us we are full of gratitude for all of them but our biggest gratitude goes to every single one of you we treasure your presence we appreciate your presence and we look forward to your returning to Baku and to continue our interactions and our dialogues in the future happy returns home and may you return to Baku again and again thank you Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow for those who will go on the special trip to Shusha, please come to the lobby at uh, 8 o'clock with your passport and uh, visas and whatever else is required so that uh, we will travel together. Uh, please uh, note that for those who want to join that particular expedition and you have the the uh, notes I think in the mail and beyond that let's have dinner please you've been very patient <laughs> <laughs>